Would you dive to the bottom of the ocean if Gabe Newell owned the submarine? Inkfish Expeditions, Gaben's marine research company, owns some of the top available submarines in the world that he uses to find new and unknown life forms. They recently revamped one of their ships and started a new mission. So, this is everything you want to know about Inkfish. Gabe Newell, the man behind Steam and some of gaming's best franchises like Portal and Half-Life, started a marine research company back in 2021 just a few years after starting his brain-computer interface company, Starfish. It should be no surprise Gabe Newell loves water and the deep ocean, with him owning a yacht collection worth $1 billion. Gaben's goal with Inkfish is to advance marine science by exploring the ocean's most remote areas, specifically the Abyssal and Haddal zones, which go down to upwards of 11,000 meters in the water. Although their site currently states coming soon, several interviews with employees have indicated that their objectives include mapping uncharted seafloor, studying marine biodiversity, and discovering new species while protecting the ocean's ecosystems. Inkfish doesn't just go out there on some fishing boat. Inkfish's expeditions rely on cutting edge equipment that they bought from a famous explorer and US Navy SEAL veteran Victor Vescovo in 2022. The exact details were never made public, but it was a really big deal behind the scenes. Victor sold Gaben his Triton Submarines Haddle Exploration System, HES for short. The platform includes the research ship DSSV Pressure Drop and Ultra Deep Diving Submersible DSV Limiting Factor. After the sale was completed, the DSV Limiting Factor was renamed Bakanua after the Filipino mythological creature, Bakanua. It also currently holds the records for the deepest crew dives in all five oceans, so it's a pretty prestigious submarine. The research ship, DSSV Pressure Drop, was originally a US Navy surveillance ship until it was eventually sold off. The ship was also renamed by Inkfish to RV Dagon. So these aren't your everyday toys that are made in a backyard and run off a controller. The Bakanua sub is one of only two vehicles certified for repeated full ocean depth dives. Earlier this year in 2025, Base Materials supplied buoyancy solutions to enhance its performance. This comes right around the time Inkfish was also upgrading a different ship. Not RV Dagon, this time it was RV Hydra which came with a bunch of improvements and rooms specifically designed for their operations and submarines. Plus, we won't even mention all their other smaller boats that also have seabed mapping tech built in. But Gaben isn't just buying up the best boats and submarines for this company. In 2024, Inkfish acquired Arctic Rays, which is a company specializing in deep sea lighting, imaging, and surveillance systems for marine research. So with Inkfish owning all the top tech they could find, they have held a few expeditions, including Caraco, Tonga, Antarctica, and a few others. They were also a part of the first humans to dive deep into Japan's ocean. This week, Inkfish announced their new expedition, Solomon Islands, which is now underway. Inkfish also mentioned wanting to look for World War II shipwrecks. So it's really interesting what Inkfish is doing. They're searching the deep unknown to figure out what's really going on. At least Gabe isn't doing it like the other guys and has made sure to get all the right tech. Back in 2023, when the Titan was missing, Gaben's sub, the Bakanua, was the only manned sub that could have reached it. Within these different trips they have held, they have found a bunch of rare life forms and even some unknown ones. For example, in 2024, while they were researching the Tonga Trench, they found a big fin squid, which are extremely rare, with around 12 reported sightings total on record. So we get to watch the first sighting at this location from Inkfish, who let us see this rare squid, which has 13 foot long tentacles. In a different expedition, another rare squid was found. This time, it was the Dana squid, which gave us a glimpse at its bright bioluminescent flashes. At just over a thousand meters below sea surface, a really rare observation occurred. A deep sea hoop squid called Tanangia Danae interacted with the lander. It actually latched on to the camera, which is just unbelievable. 
it's such a rare observation that when I came across it, I actually managed to keep it a secret from the rest of the crew. Inkfish also pointed out a few other rare squids they found in Antarctica, like an invisible body squid. On two deployments, to around about a thousand meters water depth. <laughs> it's a squid of some sort. We had a Morotoothopsis longgemana, the long tentacled, sort of pale, white, beautiful leggy squid. We just saw one or two, but whenever we did see them, they came right into shot. It's insane. We also came across see through squid. You could see all of its intestines and all of the detail round about its eye. I mean, that was beautiful. But I think the biggest surprise has been the Allurotuthus antarcticus. And we actually captured that one oh, oh, okay. with prey in their tentacles. One of them even looked like it had the mantle of another one of its own species. What has been special about these is that we had been told that it was quite a rare sighting. But we saw them basically in every single deployment shallower than 2,800 metres. And then the cherry on the cake. I am pumping in. On some of the submersible dives, this squid was swimming around about the submersible as we were undertaking our transect. There's two squids. Okay. <laughs> Here. They don't just take pictures and videos of these creatures though, sometimes they even catch them. Like this super giant anthropod that they are preserving to bring back to their lab and study. Oh, Ooh, something big, big in there. In there. There's huge in there. Yep. The other day we put some fish traps down to seven and a half thousand meters. We caught a super giant amphipod. It's a beaut. That's incredible. That's huge. So these guys can grow to maybe 36 centimetres in length. The one we caught was over 20 centimetres. Because this is quite a rare thing that we've caught, what I'm going to do is just, well, I'm going to pop it in some cold seawater to start with. We've seen them in quite a lot of places around the world, but their depth range is actually quite narrow, between six and seven and a half thousand meters. So obviously we don't catch them very often at all. This is a big boy. <laughs> Our pride and joy, Captain. It's super exciting because usually we're looking at things that are like millimeters in length. So when we get something that's really big, it's just really nice to be able to see all of their appendages without having to look down the microscope. Perfect. Happy. OK, yeah, that's beautiful. All right. One thing we did differently to this amphipod that other people haven't really done is we ended up putting the whole body in formalin. Supergiants have really nice, big, yellow, what look like eyes, but we're not sure if they actually work as eyes. So by putting it in formalin, we can, in the future, hopefully investigate whether or not they can see, especially at depths where it's pitch black and there's no light. Sometimes they find stuff that is a bit unknown, like this rare species of octopus. Cruising along the seafloor uh, around 3,760 meters. Right. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Bit of rubble, cobbles, all that kind of stuff. And right over the starboard field of view, I saw this white thing. And to be honest, I wrote it off as being a bit of trash because it didn't fit with everything else we'd seen. And then I saw it move and I was like, oh, that's the thing. So I said to Al Scott, the pilot, starboard, 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 get over there, get over there. Right enough, there was this wonderful octopus. Very, very cautious, very, very slowly came up to it and it did seem to mind us being there and that's wonderful, it was a great thing to capture and very unexpected and very rare. I personally have never come across an octopus in the sub before. So afterwards we decided to try and work out what it is. Oh, that's incredible. 
In 2016, there were scientists who, of Hawaii, found an octopus. They called it Casper the Ghost Octopus, as of Casper the Friendly Ghost. My first thought was maybe it's one of those, but then I went back and after the dive and looked, I was like, nah, it's not one of those. Our one looks almost like older, wiser than Casper. Casper looks a bit like you'd expect. And so I sent the pictures to an expert and, and they're sort of uh, not too sure either. Certainly uh, what's called an inserate octopus, which means it doesn't have any of the webs between the arms, as opposed to the dumbos. It's relatively small as well. Its head's only about 10, 15 centimetres across. But the feeling at the moment is it's probably an unknown. It's probably related to Casper. Casper doesn't have a genus or a species, doesn't have a proper name yet, because no one's ever caught one. So it was just a, a real highlight from that dive. And it's something that nobody really knows what it is, which I think is intriguing. I like that. They even mentioned they found something that looked like COVID-19. This we found out is a minesweeper radiolarian. Kind of looks like the COVID-19 sort of um, oh, bug. Yeah, minesweeper oh. radiolarian. Yeah, and he's probably about the size of a big marble. Pretty weird, pretty wonderful, but that's just one example of like quite a few sort of little weird and wonderful things. And some of these things we're still trying to figure out what the hell they are. But it wasn't just those. While they were on their Antarctica expedition, they spotted some sleeper sharks, which is said to be the first sleeper sharks filmed in Antarctica's deep water. Some of the more unusual footage that we captured was finding a sleeper shark at 490 meters water depth. That was certainly very unexpected. Yeah, it must be pretty big. Over two meters, I think? Yeah, something around that. <laughs> In terms of geographic distribution, it's not actually been seen within Antarctic waters. This is the most southerly that this seems to have been found. While they were in Tonga, they found a different sleeper shark, the Pacific sleeper shark, which is estimated to be around 3.6 meters, as we got to see a full close-up, including its mouth. This observation occurred to the west of the Tonga Trench. We assume that it was fairly big, around 3.5 metres long. It was at 1,400 metres depth. And due to the lack of observable claspers on the pelvic fins, we've identified it as female. She goes straight for the camera. From this view, we can see completely inside the shark's mouth. Not too long after that, she realises it doesn't taste very good and goes for the bait. It was around 2.5 degrees Celsius, which makes sense as we know that they prefer cooler waters. Thankfully, the wire we put around the bait doesn't seem to get stuck in her mouth for very long before she swims away, giving us a full view of her size. Other times when they find stuff that's unknown, it leads to interesting speculation. Like when they were doing a dive in Antarctica, and they encountered a strange life form. At the moment, Inkfish hasn't given a follow up on if they figured out exactly what this unknown life form is, as their site just says coming soon. But it does give us a glimpse into some of the things that they surface, are finding. Surface, Faku, life support, good. There's so much stuff in the water here, eh? just the particles and stuff. Yeah, falling from the crazy amount of life on the surface, eh? Hey? Yeah. One thing that was particularly prominent in both dives was the drop stones, these big black, angular, beautifully eroded stones that have fallen from glaciers and icebergs as, as they've floated out to sea. But on them, there was this row of white organic material. Right, so see that rock in front was the white stripe on it? It's not right. I've got a hunch. Where are we going over? It was quite disorientated because it doesn't fit with anything we've normally seen before. You see these shapes coming out of the horizon and sometimes in a really peculiar way. Each rock has it in only one face. And that's not how geology works. That's the smells of biology. Are these white stripes a weird sponge? For a while I think it was some kind of sponge, but then there's other examples where we see these really peculiar shapes and patterns that are on these things. This is not part of the rock, this is something which is attached to the rock, so one of the big things we want to look into is what these are. And that's a big one on that one there. There's many, many examples of these which we're going to have to go and take to someone who 
has maybe had experience with these before. Sometimes though, they find nothing. Like when they were exploring Horizon Deep at 10,000 meters below, they noticed it was empty. And we can see the bomb. There it is. Horizon Deep. Second deepest point on Earth. The final depth of the dive was 10,805 meters. Uh, what we found was a desolate environment that had very little signs of life, very little diversity. Just off of one expedition trip alone, they reported finding 119 species. We've already identified over 100 species for the Nova Canton. I was just looking through some footage earlier today and I already saw a few new things that we haven't included yet. So we're well over 120 sort of species. The sort of species catalogue that our team is now able to produce has never been done before. And this is just the start, based off all the information that they are giving us. So it is interesting to see what Gabe and Newell's other companies are doing, as these were some of their first findings from the first few years. So just imagine what they could possibly find next, within the next few years, in future expeditions, as Inkfish was only started four years ago in 2021. So would you explore the bottom of the ocean inside Gabe Newell's submarine? At least with Inkfish, we won't have to. His company will, while we get to look at the findings.